I have a raw bow build for you guys, and this one is actually pretty crazy. Is it better than my sniper bow build? It just might be. And what makes it so amazing, you might ask? Well, blocking level 5, of course. Wait, on a bow? What are you talking about? A bow that takes advantage of an armor skill that gives you 5 levels of blocking. What? How is that possible? Well, folks, this bow build has a few things that a lot of people have been overlooking for bow, including myself. These are things that I only recently considered because, largely because I'm lazy and I don't like change. I'm afraid of change. I'm afraid of doing things differently. But you know what? You know who's not afraid of change? Capcom. And what Capcom did when they gave us anomaly monsters and quests is they changed the game entirely. They changed all the rules on us and now we have to deal with those new rules. And so you might find once you get to these anomaly quests that your old sets work okay. But the higher you get into the anomalies, the less and less okay they become. And so you have to adapt and you have to change. Well, a lot of your playstyle might have to change. A lot of the items that you use might have to change. And some of the things on your builds might have to change. Have to is kind of a strong word. You don't have to, of course. But if you want to keep up, and you want to keep playing at the same pace that you were before, some things have just got to go. I like to keep my quests under 10 minutes. And it's becoming increasingly difficult for me to do that with my older builds. So I had to step it up a notch. Now, you might be thinking, well, why don't you just build an elemental set? Well, largely because I'd have to build five elemental sets. I'd have to augment and max out five different bows. And while I can do that, I'm not ready to do that. Someday, I might. But today's not that day. I've created a raw bow build. It allows me to keep up with the anomaly monsters, despite all the ways that anomaly monsters have changed the rules on us. So... Why are you wasting our time? Let's just see the bow in the build. Well, you're looking at the bow, aren't you? No, you're not looking at the bow. That's the Kamara Ninja bow or something like that. I don't, I don't know. That's just a nice skin that I put on it so I could give you a nice bow reveal. So let's see what bow I chose for this raw bow build designed to destroy anomaly monsters. There it is. Pure bow. Kuzu no ha. Look at the beauty. Look at that shiny gold, purplish, I guess. I don't know. I'm kind of colorblind. Now you're saying to yourself, I know what that bow is. Isn't that a Mizu bow, right? Yeah, it kind of is, isn't it? Uh, isn't that an elemental bow? Well, yeah, it kind of is, isn't it? But let's look at the stats and you tell me how much of an elemental bow this is. 11 fire. Yeah, it's technically an elemental bow. But <laughs> that's not designed for element, is it? That's just a token amount of element. The attack, however, is pretty nice. The slots, of course, we don't get that uh, triple rampage slot. Well, look, we're not using Elembane on this build, are we? And it's a rapid level five bow. Pretty cool. So what's so special about this bow, though? Why, how does this beat your Royal Order bow? It doesn't have the same defense on it as Royal Order bow, but it does have 10% affinity. It's got a really nice base attack. The coatings kind of suck. The slots are better overall but look at the charge levels let me show you what would happen if i equipped the royal order bow with this build oh look any of the bows look at the charge level on these level four is grayed out isn't it yeah except the bow i'm using right now it's got a natural level four charge how awesome is that no bow charge plus required that saves me a level four slot which I can definitely appreciate. So it's got a lot going for it. Now, let's take a look at the augments. I've boosted the attack on this bow. So while it had started at 320, now it's up to 355 with 10% affinity. So what have we done with the build? How are we building around this bow? It's still a rapid shot type. But what was wrong with the sniper build? Well, the sniper build was not hitting as hard as I needed it to on the anomalies. What did I do to fix that? I added defense, of course. Okay, that is true, but that's not why I hit harder. Let's take a look at the build itself. You notice my affinity is 35%. 
So I put some critical eye on this. My defense is okay right now, but just wait till you see it in quest. All right, I'm using the same skills, but you notice my Herculean draw is on the red scroll. That's because my primary scroll now is gonna be the red scroll. That might give you an indication of what skills you're about to see. Attack boost, same as last time. Defense boost. Why do I got defense boost? I want higher defense. High level anomaly monsters hit like a truck. And I'm not going to rely on, you know, these uh, one-off skills to save me. I need to get hit a couple times. That's just what ha that's just how it is. I accept that. I acknowledge that about myself. Now, agitator, what? Why are you running agitator? Isn't that way way too old of a skill and too useless of a skill to use well you tell me how often are how often are these high level anomaly monsters enraged pretty much all the time yeah pretty much all the time so this thing's going to give me another 15 percent affinity which will get me up to 50 percent affinity all right keep that in mind and 20 attack awesome there's my critical eye that boosts my affinity as well obviously crit boost because we're going to be doing a lot of critical hits weakness exploit why not go 100% affinity and hit the monster anywhere? Because the reality of ranged weapons is for nearly every monster in the game, you have one good hit zone. Some monsters don't have any good hit zones for ranged, but ranged gets the shaft on good hit zones. A couple monsters have two good hit zones, but the vast majority of them have just one that you're focusing on, like the head, for example. It's almost always the head. And the other hit zones are so bad that there's no point shooting the other spots. The damage is so small, so it doesn't matter if you're critting on them or not. Your damage still sucks. Now we'll wrap it up, of course. Part Breaker, that's going to work in conjunction with the Blood Rite, which is nice for health recovery. It's nice for something else that you will see momentarily. Mail of Hellfire. I previously kind of talked down on this skill. You know, in the past I've said, all right, why do I want to lower my defense or my resist so much for this skill? Well, I have ways around that, don't I? As you can see, I've got Defense Boost 7, which pretty much negates Mail of Hellfire entirely, and then some, all right? And so I get the attack bonus for Mail of Hellfire. Adren Rush 3, another 30 to attack boost. I'm just stacking the attack on this. All right, the next skill, Embolden. Who uses Embolden on a build that doesn't block? This skill is known across the entire community as the one skill you need to get if you want to block better, right? Right, get Embolden. In case you haven't noticed, bows can't block. Why am I using Embolden? Well, because Embolden doesn't just block. It gives you defense. Right there plus 40 defense and in addition to the defense boost more than makes up for the mail of hellfire loss and embolden three will give you evade window five now this only takes place when you're getting targeted by the monster but guess what the only time you need evade window is when you're getting targeted by the monster right now if i were playing uh spread and close range in a multiplayer quest i could get hit when the monster's targeting someone else but playing rapid i got some distance between me and the monster, so it's rare that he's going to hit me when he's targeting someone else. All right, and it says, when I'm targeted by the monster, the monster is more likely to become enraged. So that also helps with my agitator, doesn't it? The more that monster's enraged, the longer my agitator is gonna be active. See, it's all starting to come together, isn't it? So embolden, yeah, I can't block, I can't use the, the guard boost on this, but I don't care. I want it for the defense and the evade window. Embolden is probably the single best defensive skill in the game. Like, can you beat that? Okay, maybe defense boost is because of that massive defense increase it gives you. But on top of that, look at this. Evade window, defense, and if you have a shield, boost your guarding ability. Now, here we go. We're getting to the meat of it. Blood Awakening. Level three. We use this with the part breaker and blood right. And so what happens here with Blood Awakening is as you recover health, you will activate Blood Awakening. And Blood Awakening will boost your attack even further. So we're stacking even more damage. Build up boost I don't really take advantage of. But if I use those exhaust coatings, yeah. That might help. Recovery speed is incidental. Para resist incidental. Frenzy bloodlust is incidental. So that's not really important. So the meat of it is right there, guys. We're going with some old school traditional attack power boosts combined with some new school. And for our 
Evade window, we got Embolden, and Defense, of course. So it looks like I've got all the old school skills on here, but we're combining all those with a newer one, the Blood Awakening. The Blood Awakening is going to give me another 25 attack. The initial amount's gonna be 10, and then when I get to the 150 points of light, health points healed, I will get additional 25 attack. So that's the new build. Now, it doesn't look like much, does it? Because there's still a lot of old school skills on here. Attack boost, defense boost. I mean, it kind of looks like a joke build, doesn't it? I mean, when you first look at this, you might think, come on, really, is that really going to be useful and competitive in the high level anomaly quests? Come on. Agitator. No one's used Agitator since pre-title update one or whatever right? I don't even know when that skill came out. Maybe it was title left day one. I don't know, but nobody's used agitator for like two years, right? Um, and then like stuff that we had in low rank, you know, in uh, base game, weakness, exploit, wrap it up, part breaker, you know, blood right was a title update. Fine. The blood right and the part breaker, you know, where are these skills coming from? The blood right is coming from the helm. The part breaker is coming from the legs and the blood awakening. It comes from three pieces of primordial right so it's all that primordial that i'm wearing male hellfire really nice tons of attack power here adren rush i can proc this pretty often especially if i'm playing solo because yeah i do still have to dodge bolt a lot of attacks and that embolden is just amazing i love the extra defense i love the evade window five everything just came together nicely in theory right if we're just role playing here that looks great so yeah this is my role play set where i can pretend to be a top tier player um let me get my exhaust coatings out what i don't have is the reload speed 2 i don't have room for it i don't have any room left for that um however check out my equipment i can still augment one piece of equipment it's possible is it possible to get two points of reload speed 2 would I want to give up anything on it right now? Not really. But, you know, I could reroll some of these other augs. Like, that one is not that great. I do need that slot. But maybe I get a slot and reload speed one. And then I get reload speed one there. So, I mean, this is just a wasted augment right there. I could re-augment this and get reload speed or an additional slot. So, yeah, I can get that in there. And I have lots of room to expand on this in terms of augments. And I, you know, I kind of avoid augmenting anyway. It's just such a pain. These augments are so old. Now, what makes this all possible? Probably this talisman, <laughs> Mail of Hellfire 3. That's where that build-up boost is coming from. It's just extra. The three level two slots. Really nice talisman. They do get better than this. I mean, that is pretty nice if you're into build-up boost. That's a that's a really amazing talisman. Could I take advantage of this build-up boost? Probably, yeah. Because look at this. Three level two slots. Let's check out the blast bows. I mean, I could... Could I even make this better right now as I'm recording this video? Let's look at our blast bows, shall we? Because our blasts are the only bows that apply status naturally. Now there's a rapid with just a single level two slot. We're gonna need a couple extra, aren't we? And also it needs the bow charge plus, so that kind of breaks. Here is one, doesn't have the right slots. Yeah, so the only bows where you can rely on build up boost for the entire quest, meaning the only ones that provide status naturally are gonna be the blast bows. So the only way for me to take advantage of that build up boost is a blast bow. Now here's a blast bow, doesn't require the bow charge plus, but it's spread. Okay, fine. So you spread, no big deal. I'm still missing a couple slots there. So I'd have to make up for that with augments. Would it be worth it to sit here and augment for three hours? Maybe. I might do that when I get bored. Uh, here's a pierce. This one I would only need to... Well, look, I could reduce my critical eye on that by 10%. So we might be able to work with Rachna, but that's a pierce bow. You could run the pierce with close range. It's not as nice as I'd like, but I could adapt this build to take advantage of that build up boost for sure. Could definitely adapt this build to become a blast build and maybe change my play style. The nice thing about the build as it stands right now with the Violet Mizu bow is that I don't have to change my play style at all. It's a rapid play style with dodgeball, lots of very focused, targeted shots. This is, there's definitely some potential here to modify it to use this blast. I don't know if I can make it work because, yeah, this one does need a bow charge plus. So I need a level four slot 
and I would need a level two slot to get the equivalent build from this bow. I might be able to get those with um, with augments. We'll have to play around with that um, in another role playing session. There it is. Great role play build. Definitely a great role play build. Does it actually work though? I mean, that's what you really came here for, right? You came here for gameplay video. You came here to see me prove to you that this thing is viable in end game, right? Right? Is it viable? That's the question that we're always asking of our monster hunter overlords. Let's find out, shall we? Fighter, marksman, and moxie adrenaline. Is it viable? We're about to find out. Well, so much for my evade window, right? Damn it. Gotta remember how to play bow. Am I role playing or do I know how to play the game? You get to decide this one. Can't really aim that well. I should probably learn how to play with keyboard and mouse, right? Don't all the best players use keyboard and mouse? I should have comboed before I ran out of coatings. That way I wouldn't have had to reapply them. Facing the wrong way, big guy. Oh, I got hit again. I'm getting hit though, look. And I'm taking the hits too, aren't I? How is that possible? How am I able to take these hits? Well, let's take a look. 979. Is that right? I thought I had a little higher last time. Ooh, that one hurt. That one hurt. We better roll out of this. Ooh, stopped him right in his tracks. Save that exhaust in case we ever knock him out of affliction. Will I ever knock him out of affliction? Will I ever knock her out of affliction? Why am I playing without my dash juice? Let's get that back. All right, let's just put you on ice for a minute as I don't use my radial menu for this, as I forget to keep my buff supplied. Yeah, I think keyboard and mouse would be really nice. All right, I think you're gonna pop here soon. One of us is gonna pop. I think it might be me. That fire though, that's killing me. I probably should be using my bolt boost too. All right, popped it out. See if I can get a KO with this. Jesus Christ. Not like that, I won't. No, we didn't get our KO, but I think we got a little extra damage out of it. But one thing we are doing is surviving so far. Now, you can talk about how much damage you do with an elemental set against this monster. And yeah, I do some great damage in it with a elemental charge blade against this monster. Some great elemental weaknesses on this guy. And, you know, if you really want to see me do a elemental run with a bow, fine. That's a whole nother video, which we can do. Still working on that timing. How's my role playing so far? Except for, except for that move, I think I'm role playing pretty well in this quest. All right, we didn't get him that time either. So, what about that stamina, though, right? What about the stamina? Aren't we supposed to, uh, aren't we supposed to have a stamina surge and, um, what's the other one? You know, I've been playing a lot of this quest without even dash juice. Also, without a lot of attack power, because I keep forgetting to open that up. Oh, those are better numbers, aren't they? I've only had to focus shot, like, twice. Three, I've done it maybe three times. Oh, that was a little early. I'll give you that one. That was a very bad role play right there. We gotta pop this anomaly though. He's he's gone way too long without getting popped. There he goes. Should be getting blue skull here in a minute. So you notice my damage does go down quite a bit because he's not enraged. She's not enraged. Must be gender correct in this day and age. I don't really think of my monsters as being gendered. I think that confines them to stereotypes. 
that maybe they don't want to be a part of. I think my fingers are cramping. There's the blue skull. There we go. Nice role play. 1241. I did it earlier today in 10, but that's part of the role play, right? You gotta, you gotta explain that, yeah, I've had better times, but I really did. I got a 10, uh, 1051 earlier. Really, I did. I swear. I'm trying to get it under 10. That's my goal with this build. And I think I can do it if I don't get hit as much, and uh, which is doable, as you can see. I'm, I've got most of the timings down, and I need to keep up my bolt uh keep up my herculean draw i need to start doing the bolt boost again i did do that the bolt boost earlier in the earlier quest and i need to i think that's all i need to do and i can get it under 10 yeah maybe better aim so there it is nice build works well works against that monster and against other high level anomaly monsters this is going to give me better damage than the sniper build and this is probably going to replace my sniper as my go-to bow build for now will there be modifications i make to this probably this is just the first revision i'm just getting started with this i think this is ushering in a new era of raw bow builds uh, for myself and for the entire community um, being a leader of this community i expect thousands and thousands if not millions of people to take my word as gospel and to copy everything that I do. So make sure you're doing that, okay? Do your part in the group role play. Get the word out that there's a new top raw dog on the streets. And this one is going to take us to role playing heights that no one has seen before. And we're going to look fantastic doing it. So that's what I got for you. I'll pop the armor skills up on the screen for you again. The equipment is pretty easy almost full primordial and it's got the anmyo sash uh it's mine does because i've got two extra slots in mine and it's got some skills that you might need it just worked out i use the set builder if you you know don't try to copy me directly um use the set builder so take all these skills and uh, plug them in and see what you can get check out the channel other channels uh subscribe to everything click on everything like everything check out my patreon i do have a couple of people subscribe to me over there it's really cheap. It's like $1.25 a month. It's like, it's not, you can't even buy coffee that cheap anymore. You got to spend two bucks on coffee these days, like the bare minimum garbage coffee. So it's actually cheaper than coffee. And it's just once a month. How many coffees do you buy every month? Right? So um, send one my way. Send, it's like half a cup of coffee. Send it my way once a month. You know, if a thousand of you guys did that, I would be able to do this full time. I mean, it'd be that simple. I can live off so little money. It's ridiculous. You know, we got almost 10,000 subscribers. If one tenth of you subscribe to my Patreon, I could make videos for you guys all day long. Like just, I could play this game and record it and do as any builds you guys want to see. I could do whatever commentary you guys want to see. I could really go crazy with this. So there it is. Hit me up on Patreon. It's cheap. It's probably the biggest bang for your buck. You guys can keep the channel going and growing with the tiniest contribution. So there's my self-promotion and my sponsor, sponsored by myself today. Uh, yeah, see you in the next one, guys.